Hey guys, what's up and welcome back to Two Toe Tags Metal Reviews and today we're giving you guys our first impressions of the new releases from Black Braid and Butcher Babies. So, these are two bands we have not actually covered on the channel yet, technically, because Black Braid has been mentioned on this channel before. Black Braid 1 came out last year and it was on your top 5 of the year. It was my number 4, I believe, yeah. Yeah, yeah. which awesome I mean, album. Yeah, yeah, and Black Braid 2 came out today, so I'm, I'm going to pass the floor off to you because you loved Black Braid 1 enough to put it on your top 5, so I'm curious what your thoughts so are on the sequel. Cool. Okay, I'll start with Black Braid. Um, yeah, so I was super hyped for this. Uh, I love the first album. It just kind of hit me like a brick when I first heard it, and it just... This artist has such a a knack for making music that's really aggressive but really peaceful at the same time and there's that there's this weird kind of marriage between those two opposite things and he does it so well and it just I just love it and it, I just fall in love with it when I'm listening to it um, I feel like this album is an extension of Black Braid 1 which makes sense it, it feels like a continuation there's certain ideas certain um, I, I don't know motifs maybe that he's borrowed or or you know, taken from the first album and reused here as, you know, like a callback kind of thing in certain mm -hmm. songs. Um, I don't know the exact song names or what parts exactly, but I just hear the references, right? But I feel like everything in this album so far is a bit of an upgrade from the last album is in terms of the dynamics, the heaviness, the, um, the soloing on this album is a lot more kind of thrashy, Kind of a lot more wild on the solos, which I liked. I like the fact that he's taking steps like that. I feel like it's a positive direction to go. Um, there's a couple songs that are pretty long. So tracks five and six are back to back. One's 13 and a half minutes, and the other one's just slightly over 11 minutes. Having those both really long songs back to back was a little troublesome for me. I thought those could be spread yeah, out a little more. It's an interesting decision to make. Like that's. Not something you'd usually see on an yeah. album that has long songs. The whole like album is an hour long, which is long in the scheme of average album it's, length. Yeah, these definitely days. longer than average. Uh, but most songs are like given like the five to seven minute range, which is fine. But those songs stand out. And for me, I mean, I listened to the album once. I only had a chance to listen to it one time. But for me, those songs kind of didn't have a lot that was really like sparking out at me which is a little bit scary because you want a long song to have a lot of moments that are going to be like, oh yes, this is why you should listen to this long song. Mm -hmm. But I didn't really get that. But again, on one listen, it's hard to pass that judgment. So I don't want to prejudge too, too harshly, harshly on it. A couple songs that stood out to me were track number three, The Wolf That Guides the Hunter's Hands. Um, this is one of the ones that reminded me of something off the first album. Really cool, doomy, blackened vibes on this song. Um, Would you say that's kind of the general vibe of this artist? That is the, the that is the general vibe of this artist. Very, it's like it's black metal, but it's doom. Maybe it's black and it's doom metal, um, or doomed black or metal. Doomed black metal, yeah. But it's very, it's got elements of both those things um, very prominently. Uh, so that song and number eight, Twilight Hymn of Ancient Blood, I thought was really good too. This is probably one of the harder songs on the album. Uh, it's one of the ones that kind of steps a little bit more outside the boundary that I'm used to listening to this band. Um, it has like those bit more thrashy elements, really sweet solo. Uh, just kind of goes a little bit harder, right? Um, but overall, I did like my first listen. I'm looking forward to hearing more. Uh, it's There's a lot in there. These are very talented artists, and I think he's got a lot of cool ideas. Really good on the riffs, too. Yeah, re regarding Twilight Hymn of Ancient Blood, it, it kind of halfway through turns into a completely different song, like, out of nowhere. Yeah. The song kind of just ends, and then, bam, here's something else. And I checked. I'm like, is this a new track? No. Like, what what's going on? I liked it a lot. What came out of that, the thrashier sound, I'm like, whoa, this is actually sick. This riff is really cool, but... Mm -hmm. It was just kind of strange, and I, I did kind of find that as the album was going, each song kind of felt like it could have been the closer. Like, if the, if the album ended with this song, it would work, and then it would continue, okay? If it ended with this song, it would work. And I think um, Sadness and the Passage of Time and Memory has so much silence at the end, you'd think it was the actual closer, but there's one more track after that, yeah. which I thought was kind of funny. So as someone who didn't listen to Black Braid 1, I kind of knew what I was getting into just based on you talking about it, hearing about it. Um, and the first few tracks, I'm like, okay, this is good, but I didn't really have much to say until I got to 
the 13 minute and 11 minute tracks. That's when I started to think, oh, okay, this is actually pretty cool. And I was worried, because I'm like, okay, you have a 13 minute track, followed by an 11 minute track, and this is in the middle of the album, like awkward plays, awkward, like that. that's not normal, right, as I said. But it worked, and I found that really interesting. Um, Moss Covered Bones on the Altar of the Moon is a really good contrast pace-wise for the few songs before it, because it's a more slower and brooding song, and that's the 13-minute mm-hmm. track. Uh, in the middle, the bit where they start, he starts to incorporate flute is really cool, and I like that a lot. And the song as a whole kind of flies by. Like, it, it does a good enough job at enveloping you in the musical story that it tells that it's not going to drag. It, you're not going to think, oh, it's this 13-minute song over. You're going to get enveloped in like the woods that's pretty yeah. much kind of like the vibe that this uh this album yeah. puts you through yeah and nature. you get engrossed in the nature of this album yeah. and you don't you know at least based on my first listen I, I didn't feel like anything was like super dragging i kind of just went with it and i and i felt like it took a few songs for me to really really kind of sink my teeth into it and that happens sometimes yep you know you put an album on and maybe it takes you a few tracks to really warm up to it mm-hmm. um one cool thing that i noticed is that the second track uses the melody from the first track, which is kind of like what Mental Cruelty did on their album that we recently reviewed Mm -hmm. with the title track, and then the song right after uses that. So I thought that was a cool thing. That's always really cool to see. Now the the intro and the other interludes are all about approximately two minutes long each, which is kind of hefty for intros and interludes. Mm -hmm. And with the intro, I was a bit worried because I'm like, okay, this is kind of long and not really much is going on. But the more interludes, there's I think three total, including the intro. Yeah. The second and third, like it just got better. And I think it's maybe because I was getting more used to the album, but by the time I got to the third interlude, I'm like, this is really cool. Like I'm yeah. totally into it. And the more I would listen to this album, I'd, I'd hope that it doesn't fall apart on me. Because I feel like yeah. albums like this are not really helped when you shuffle them. You know, it's the kind of album that's really made to go from front to back. If you shuffle yeah. it, you might lose out on the experience. Because if you shuffle it, you might get three interludes in a row. And it's just yeah. like, it hurts the experience that way. Yeah, my, my thoughts on the interludes is that I liked what I heard, but I'm I'm worried, yeah, that throughout the week I'm going to just be skipping them. Mm-hmm. Um, and I don't want that. Like, I want something that I'm going to want to listen to. And for me, interludes, that's a hard sell for, for me. And there's three of them in, like, TV Fish that are a little bit lengthy. So... We'll see. Anyway, the other, I guess, two albums is from Butcher Babies, a band that I never actually really listened to until today. I knew of them for a while, and this is released as a double album. First album's called Eye for an Eye, the other one's called Till the World's Blind, so plays on that saying. So that that was the order I listened to them in. Yep. And it was like, a, it was a really strange experience, let me tell you that. Eye for an Eye and Till the World's Blind sound so different from each other, to me it was like night and day. Starting with Eye for an Eye, I wasn't really enjoying it that much as a whole, because it kind of just sounded like a little bit more on a generic side of metal, which, you know, if I were to recommend this album, or, or that one of the two, I would recommend that to people who are either newer to the genre or just not really into the genre as maybe a little bit more of a gateway kind of album. Mm-hmm. But then I thought about that when I was listening to it, and I'm like, well... I could just recommend something that's just overall a better album. So yeah. it's like if I were to recommend that to as a gateway kind of thing, I would probably put it in like a group of albums for someone to check out. And We're not talking about the eye for an eye, right? Yeah, eye for an eye. So it's worth mentioning. It's only twenty four minutes long. It's, it's more like yeah. an EP. This is like an album and a half release, not yeah. really a double album. It's, yeah, I don't know why. I mean, other than the name and I guess the album art kind of being similar to each other, which, I mean, I'm really going to be honest, the album art for both of these are not good. <laughs> it's just wind chimes. And it's sad because the album art for the singles from Hyper and I look sick. Both yeah. of them look sick. So you've got this cool looking stuff. Here's some wind chimes. Yeah, well, before we move on to the next, um, the, the Till the World, Till, Till the World's Blind part of the album, um, I had similar thoughts, right? I felt like this was very... Tame. It's almost like pop metal alternative. It's kind of—I would classify it as new metal to be honest, but it's very soft new metal. It's more—it's like—it's like similar to like Evanescence, 
or a Linkin Park, a Rob Zombie, like very like accessible. Yeah, you know, that's, the most that's accessible a really good. That's a good way to bands, put it. right? I will say um, the vocals were, were good sounding on it. Like regardless, vocals are good sounding. Like, that that was a consistent thing. Like oh, it's a good vocal performance. Yeah, and it doesn't. It's not horrible. Like there's no, stuff on it that was that was redeeming. Like track number three, Yorktown, I thought was pretty cool. Um, I like how it kind of goes back and forth between this kind of calm talking vocal to a yelling like almost Wayne Static type of scream mm -hmm. going back and forth. Um, track number six is called It's Killin' Time Baby, but I had a weird dyslexia thing and I thought it was It's Baby Killin' Time. <laughs> I don't know why I just read it backwards and I'm like, wait a second, I'm not listening to Lordy. What the hell is going on here? Um, but it's a song that it has some hype to it and I was listening to it and I was going, okay, this is reminding me of something else that I like. What is it? What is it? It's um, that song, Do the Evolution by Pearl Jam. I think I showed you that video, an animated video um, by Todd McFarlane. We watched it one time, maybe you don't remember, but yeah. there's that. Remember, this yeah. song reminded me of that song, um, which I like. So it has some redeeming qualities to it, but overall it left me very underwhelmed. Like, oh God, what's this next? It's, the next one's an hour long, Yeah, I was, 47 minutes. I was curious. I too. was like, what's this gonna be, right? So yeah. I was a little nervous. Like if this is like a 20 minute thing and the other one's like an hour, like what is going yeah. on? And I will agree that that last track, which has a feature from Escape the Fate, which I, I guess the vocal feature, Yeah. Um, is the, probably the best song on it. Well, what, what, I want to mention one more thing, sorry. So, um, the last song is actually a radio edit of the first song. Oh yeah, I, I, which is weird because it's 22 seconds shorter. I tried to listen to them to compare the differences and I didn't get all the way through, so I don't know all of them. But the first thing I noticed is that the radio edit cuts out the drum fill at the beginning. Like in the beginning, oh, there's like a little bit of an intro and then there's a drum fill before the song starts and that's on the actual song. But on the radio edit, they cut out the drum fill. Bro, like Travis Barker said, give the drummer some. <laughs> Come drum on, fill. man. Drum fills are what offensive. The heck? Oh, the radio got to the drum fill. That, uh, but after after cool. I found that out, I went, okay, I don't even need to listen to the rest. If they're going to cut out a drum fill, like, I, yeah, I don't care like, what the other 20 seconds of the song is. I didn't even listen because it just it's just the same song. Like, to me, 20, 20 seconds, 22 seconds shorter. But whatever. I, I thought that was weird. So, anyways, on to the next one. Till the World's Blind. So, coming into this... I didn't know what to expect. I'm like, okay, what I just heard, like, I expected very low. Like, am I am I gonna get more of that, or like, what is going on here? And then Red Thunder came on, and <laughs> like, oh shit, Red Thunder alone clears. Yeah, eye for an eye, like that. It's the second track, by the way. There's an, the intro, second, there's an intro, there's an intro, and, and then, then Red the, Thunder. The, yeah, the energy, awesome. The fills. Like the drum drum performance, awesome. Everything just cranks up to yeah. ten, and it's like, wow, what the heck? Like, it makes me wonder why was this released as a double album if they're so disconnected outside of like the name and the album art looking the same? Yeah, you know, like it's other odd. than that, it's like, what's the point? Especially considering one is only like twenty minutes. Yeah, and I just found that weird. Yeah. Anyway, I enjoyed Till the World's Blind quite a bit. It has such a ferocity to it that I. And you mentioned new metal earlier, totally fills in that that late '90s new metal aggressiveness a lot, a lot more so than the first one. Too. For sure, a hundred percent, a hundred percent. That halftime riff in the middle of Back Streets of Tennessee, loved that. That was super cool. Um, I, I kind of felt that wrong end of the knife kind of does what the the first album does, but just better. It's mm -hmm. like similar thing. It's just. A direct upgrade I found. Yeah. Um, I don't know if you noticed, but Beaver Cage in the middle does the same thing that um, that happens in Sugar by System of a Down, where it goes slow and then they repeat the same phrase and they speed back up, speed back up, oh, speed back up. Didn't notice. Like when I heard that, I'm like, wait a minute, that's just like Sugar. I think that's a cool little callback or reference there. Mm -hmm. um, but yeah, now in the second half of the album, I'll admit, I feel like an hour is kind of long for an album like this. Like, new 40, metal, 47 minutes. 47 minutes. So, That's 14 tracks, though. 14 tracks. Two, one is an intro, one's an outro. Yeah. Which the outro is just a voicemail. It's like a skit. It's like, it's yeah. a skit, essentially. It's a voicemail it's skit. Lame. But I kind of felt like in the latter half, I was getting a little bit fatigued with it. Um, because, you know, you have so much energy. And they do a good job at breaking up the energy with a few songs, including one with a feature from Chad Gray. Which I was not expecting. Like when I was scrolling through the tracks, I'm like, "What the hell?" It's like Chad a ballad, it, and it's a ballad. I wasn't yeah. expecting that either. I wasn't expecting the Chad Gray feature to be on a ballad. Yeah. Um, but I mean, the only issue is I feel like maybe that ballad could have been moved a little bit later because mm -hmm. there's like three or four tracks after that. Yeah. Which 
have some good um, moments in them that I enjoy, but I kind of felt like after that ballad, it's like you kind of heard everything that this album has to offer, and it's not like yeah. anything new is going to come. But it could have ended there. It, yeah, it could have. It could have. It could have. Like you could maybe trim out a little bit of the fat from it, but overall, I still enjoyed it quite a bit. Yeah, I thought, I thought I think the ballad was all right. I think it would have been a, a better song if it maybe got heavy near the end, like maybe the last quarter of the song. They just picked it up and both of them had their a chance to like do some harsh vocals. Mm-hmm. I thought that would have been cool. Uh, but yeah, overall, man, just uh, as a whole, a big upgrade from from Eye for an Eye. Um, so yeah, Eye for an Eye sounded like Linkin Park, Evanescence, like I mentioned. This one was more in line with like Korn, Otep, Kitty, yeah. some Arch Enemy vibes in there. Yeah right static x stuff like that like um just really pumping music right um down tuned all that stuff some stuff that i noticed um you mentioned what was the song beaver cage so it's got this cool like calypso style beat i don't know if you noticed that yeah I thought that was kind of cool too that stood out um that was pretty cool uh best friend the song right after that hits really hard a lot of angst right angst is a word that kept coming to my head when i was listening to this uh album um yeah, the, the intro track to Darn That Nightmare is kind of a cool, like, jazz and cabaret style, like, I don't know, Marilyn Monroe comes to mind, or like Jessica Rabbit kind of thing. Yeah, yeah, right? it's, it's a good, it's like, it's a fun little kind of like intro or whatever. I yeah. mean, it didn't really like super duper, like, really nicely lead into Red Thunder. It doesn't, no, that's but the it, problem. That's the problem with it. It doesn't really do any service to what comes afterwards. Yeah. But one thing that I'll give credit to this album, maybe this band, like a TV Fest, I didn't mention this either, but we don't really listen to ba- uh, Butcher Babies at all. Um, I've heard a few things here and there, but uh, one thing I'll give credit to this album is that the songs have personality. They do. Right? The songs yes, have personality, and that's something we're always looking for on this channel is is when you have an album, do all the songs sound the same? Does it all sound like it was written by one person, or it, does each song have its own kind of identity? And I felt like on this, it did. And I felt like mm-hmm. they each had their own vibe going. They had um, different rhythms, different tempos, different things going on, uh, different vocal styles. So, you know, pluses for, the, for those things there. So overall, pretty enjoying listen. But the ultimate takeaway for me is that I feel like I would have enjoyed this a lot more if I was a teenager. Mm-hmm. But me at my age now, I feel like I've outgrown this style of music and this you know, type of sound. If I listen to the types of bands I listened to back in the day, now I can still like it because I grew up with it. But listening to it now, I feel like my head's not in the right place to really appreciate it for what it is. But I feel like as a gateway band, um, as maybe like a show opener or something like that, um, this type of music can go a long way. Yeah, for sure. So regarding what album we're gonna check out for the entire weekend review, well, what are you thinking? Black Braid 2. Black Braid 2, all right, fair enough for me. Black Braid 2 is what we're going to listen to throughout the entire week and give you guys a final review at the end of the week. Anyway, guys, that's all we got for you today. Remember to like the video if you liked it. Comment, tell us the comments below. What do you think of the two or, I guess, technically three, two and a half albums that released today? Two and a half. We'd love to hear what you guys have to say about that. And subscribe if you guys are new to the channel. I'm TV Fish. I'm Bile Self. And keep the horns up.